One of the things that sometimes I get a little bit not upset about, but a little bit frustrated about is when I hear people say, well, I realize that you did an ultrasound, but I want to get a formal ultrasound. Now, I get it. What they mean to say is they mean to say that they want to get an ultrasound performed by the radiology department. But here's the thing. When you call my thing informal and the radiology, cardiology, OB scan as formal, it kind of delegitimizes what I can do with my ultrasound at the bedside. And it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Probably a better thing to say is to call it a comprehensive or a limited examination or a cardiology performed ultrasound and an emergency medicine performed ultrasound. So recently, I participated in this conference called the Great Lake Ultrasound Consortium in Cincinnati. Super fun. Before, when I was planning on going to this lecture and giving a talk there, I thought, man, wouldn't it be funny if I took a bunch of pictures in formal attire to show that what I do is also formal? I text messaged my good friends, uh, Nick Thayuni, Cray Bolger, and Rob Wong, and they all agreed to take part in this kind of ridiculous photo shoot. And we sat down and talked about why it's important to not call it formal or informal. Check out the podcast to hear our thoughts. If you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasound some hearts, some lungs, some IVCs. Let us know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Or we could be better clinicians and use our ultrasound. Oh, hey, Rob. Oh, hello. Nick, Cray. Good morning. Why do we look so good right now? I woke up like this. Jacob, what are you speaking of? Felt cute. Might delete later. <laughs> yes, agreed. <laughs> what we are here to talk about is we're here to talk about the difference between formal ultrasound and informal ultrasound. We're at the Great Lakes Ultrasound Consortium oh. Conference, right? That is correct. In uh, Cincinnati. We're having a good time. We're at Gluck. At Gluck, exactly. <laughs> Rob. We're glucky. <laughs> Rob, tell me the difference between a formal and an informal ultrasound. I'm dramatically exasperated at you asking, Jacob. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have a lot of strong emotional opinions about this and feel very triggered. I find that... <laughs> Rob has feelings. <laughs> yeah, n not that I've ever been known to have strong opinions, but what I can say is that the perspective of there being a formal ultrasound via radi radiology, cardiology, or whoever's doing it is itself sort of insulting to everyone involved. Most specifically us who are classically the ones who are tailored as the informal sonographers. You wouldn't say, let me call anesthesia to formally intubate this person, and we shouldn't say, let me call radiology to do this formal ultrasound, right? Ultrasound can be focused, it can be comprehensive, but it's never formal or informal, unless you're wearing a tuxedo exceptions for that. <laughs> I think the big thing though is like informal applies that there's a sloppiness or a lack of credibility to what we're doing and that's where my big beef is is like we are doing credible scans we have comprehensive formal training in it we're just saying we're not doing a comprehensive exam more often than not we're doing a limited exam to answer a specific question and that's the difference it's not how good the images are how well we're documenting how credible the exam is it's the amount of information we're acquiring may be different. A lot of people like to say, because I will often freak out at them for using the term formal ultrasound, that I'm being particularly picky or that I am being overly sensitive. A drama queen, perhaps? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drama king. Thank you. But, uh, I think it really comes down to the idea that when you think about the history of ultrasound within emergency medicine, compared to radiology, cardiology, we were a little bit late to the game. So in that regard, we've spent a lot of time fighting for credibility and getting into things. And just in that fashion, by using the term formal or informal, it's really diminishing everything that we've tried to do. And it's also building up the people who are sort of trying to break us down. And I'm not into buying into that. Although admittedly, there is no room for debate at this point because we are right now doing formal ultrasounds because we are wearing formal clothing. Exactly. I mean, look at these gloves. I know. There's, there's no way around it. This is my fancy yeah. <laughs> So what is the difference between, well, well, what should we be calling it? So instead of calling it informal or formal ultrasound, what should we be saying? 
Yeah, I think you can say focused versus comprehensive, or you can say limited versus comprehensive, or you can refer to who's performing the exam. So the, the argument I've heard the other way from cardiology is, well, not all of our exams are comprehensive, right? We can mm -hmm. also do a limited exam. And I think that's one, that's a great point. When they do a limited exam, it's not necessarily different than how we do an exam when we do a limited exam. Mm -hmm. But two, if you want to make that distinction, you can say the emergency department performed or the cardiology performed exam. I like that. That's good. Or physician performed is the other provider performed, whichever one you're going to use. I think um, denotes that it's a single person performing, interpreting, and applying it versus the traditional means of sonography performed. And I think that those two, but right there, gives you the distinction of point of care ultrasound and what it is in its entirety. Is it physician performed or provider performed at the bedside where you're acquiring, interpreting, and applying? The images right then. Well, another important distinction is that we're we're not doing the ultrasound because we want to like I don't know see what the heart looks like. We're doing it to answer a specific question, right? We're doing. I think this patient has a diminished ejection fraction. I'm going to see if they have a diminished ejection fraction. I am concerned this patient has a PE. I want to see if they have right heart strain. I think that would be like the other reason why what we're doing is not informal. It's just we're maybe asking a more specific question rather than what does the heart look like? Which, I mean, we can definitely do that as well. But for me, clinically, it's usually a yes or no question is why I'm using my ultrasound most of the time. Yeah, I don't like going on ultrasound fishing expeditions. Like, yeah. go tell me what you can see. Mm -hmm. There's a great ultrasound gel podcast about that. About ultrasound fishing? Yeah, ultrasound yeah. fishing. Uh, we will have to link to that. I'm sure it was great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are sort of the ultrasound podcast. I don't remember. Guy. I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is not that I really object to someone saying formal to my face, although I do. The, <laughs> the real problem is when that language gets out in front of patients, right? We don't want right, patients right, right. to hear, well, I got an informal ultrasound, right? That, that limits our credibility for the work that we do that we're doing very legitimately. And I think it's probably not fair to give patients that impression. I think beyond patients, it's hospital leadership, it's mm -hmm. other departments who we've walked and pushed these machines uphill, some of us through the snow, to get to where we are, to establish some respect and a level of credibility within the hospital system. And so to say informal diminishes that a bit, especially when you're comparing it to something that is presumably by being formal versus informal better. Though I think my informal is quite amazing. We're all calm professional people. I don't think we go out of our way to really demean each other or to try to put each other down. And I don't think many people are in as deep as we are in regards mm -hmm. to ultrasound. So they don't think about sometimes the effect things can have beyond the good points you've made about patients, about sort of like the overall perspective. I think about how the PEM physicians in emergency medicine feel when someone say someone says that children are just little adults. It's the diminishment of a specialty. Wait, they're not. Oh yeah, I. I just want to put on the record that I'm I'm not involved in that. I'm not involved in that. Please don't tweet at me. I think that's a really good example, though. It's it's not that the phrase itself is objectionable, but the historical context attached to it. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the that's like the exact point. It's that you're bringing in a lot to a loaded situation, and even though the perspective may or may not be totally benign, it's impossible to take it as that given sort of everything else that's gone on. And so just like, I, just like I don't say that to demean PEM physicians, I hope people will not say it to demean ultrasonographers. I'm going to counterpoint that, though. It is diminishing of what we do for things like billing. It, it does have implications beyond feelings, right? Beyond our reputations. We sit in the fishbowl. We can take hits from all sides. We know what Monday morning quarterbacking does. I don't think most of us get upset for that purpose or because it feels diminishing. I think part of it is if we start officially labeling our exams as informal, then why would an insurance company cover something right. that is theoretically being billed as lesser or, or inadequate? And I think that's something we have to consider when we look at um, viability of our specialty and our programs is how are we funding them? And it's not saying we're doing these to make money, but we are doing a real service that is no different in the grand scheme of things than 
a comprehensive ultrasound. It has the same purpose to aid patient care, and that's where I would argue that there is a diminishing value of the name and that it does mean more than historical context, bruised digos, whatever. It actually has value to our specialty. Don't bring your logic and affect my feelings. <laughs> my feelings are very important. I will rationalize all of your feelings, Rob. Yeah, I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> I think the, <laughs> the other place where it becomes really important to me is that as we leave our silo of emergency medicine and we help make system-wide ultrasound a thing, it's really important for those providers who are not as established as us to have focused as a watchword for them rather than informal because it promotes good practices, right? It right, promotes right. quality assurance. It promotes ongoing and longitudinal training. We don't talk about it as an extension of the physical exam for kind of similar reasons. Not to open another Pandora's <laughs> box. Yeah, I kept my mouth shut on that one. I think that was all really interesting discussions. And this is a topic that I think is probably more important to us being uh, point of care ultrasound leaders in our communities but it's something that I think everybody should know about. Um, do you guys have anything else you wanted to add? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I like the maniacal yeah. laugh that goes with it. <laughs> <laughs> so super fun to like shop for those costumes on Amazon. If you have any questions, comments on the topics, please feel free to send us emails or tweets and hopefully hear from you soon.